In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve quadratic inequalities in two variables. So a quadratic inequality in two variables may be in one of the following four forms. So notice they all have a squared, uh, and they all have a less than, or less than or equal to, greater or greater or equal to. And the a, b, and c are real numbers, and a doesn't equal zero. Because if a did equal zero, then we would actually have a line. Now recall that you've actually graphed a linear inequality before, and in two variables, and remember that is represented by a shaded area in the Cartesian plane, and it has a line as the boundary. So therefore, a quadratic inequality in two variables represents also a region of the Cartesian plane, but this time it's going to be drawn with a parabola as the boundary. So the ordered pair x, y is a solution to a quadratic inequality if the inequality is true when the values of x and y are substituted into the inequality. So let's take a look at the steps to solving and graphing the inequality. So to graph, I would begin by graphing the related equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And this will divide the Cartesian plane into two regions. So it's very similar to the line. If the inequality is less than or greater to, notice it doesn't have that equal to line underneath, we're going to use a dashed parabola. If the inequality is less than or equal to, or greater or equal to, we're going to use a solid parabola. Excuse me. So similar to graphing a linear inequality in two variables, we decide which side of the parabola to shade uh, by substituting a test point. Uh, make sure you choose a point that's not on the parabola. And if the inequality is true, you're going to shade the region that contains that test point. If the inequality is not true, then you're going to shade the region which does not contain the test point. Now, remember that the solutions to um, an inequality with two variables, it contains an infinite number of solutions. Um, that is partially represented by the shaded area. We won't be able to draw, obviously, all of the numbers, but we will be able to shade in quite a few. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to graph... Um, the solution and then we're going to determine whether 3 and negative 4 is a solution to the inequality. So um, to graph this um, it's already in vertex form so I'm going to draw a table of values and my vertex is negative 3 and negative 4 so I like to place that in the middle of my table and then I see that my fraction I actually have 1 over 2 so because of the 2 what I want to do is I'm going to increase from my vertex by twos as well. So I'm going to choose negative five and negative seven. And on the other side, I'm going to choose negative one and positive one. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I put in negative seven and I add three, I get negative four. Square root of 16. 16 divided by two is eight. Eight minus four is four. So notice I get a nice um, whole number here. Negative five plus 3 is negative 2, we square that to get 4, 4 times a half is 2, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now, I'm going to continue filling in, plugging in the other numbers, and these, I also get something that's symmetrical. So by counting out by 2's, what happens is that I actually will get y values that are integers instead of fractions. So let's um, graph these five points. So you have negative 3 and negative 4, negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1 and 4, and negative 7, and positive 4. So we're going to connect our five points to make a nice parabola. And let's choose our test point. Now, in this case, I don't want to choose 0, 0, because it's really hard to tell when I go through a graph. It's hard to tell if 0, 0 is on the left side the inside of the parabola or on the outside. So I'm going to pick a different point that's kind of farther away. I'm going to pick 5, 0, which is over here. So when I plug in 5, 0 into my inequality, 
I get zero is less than or equal to half. And then five plus three all squared minus four. So I get five plus three, which is eight. Eight squared is 16. 16, oh sorry, eight squared is 64. 64 divided by two is 32. 32 minus four is 28. So zero is less than or equal to 28, that is true. So that means that we're gonna shade the side where my test point is, and my test point I chose was five zero. So since five zero is on the outside of this, I'm gonna shade in all of this part here, where five zero exists, but notice that is all going to also be shaded all around under here. So the only part that won't be shaded is kind of on the inside of the parabola in this space. Now, my test point, uh, sorry, my test point, I'm going to check to see if 3, negative 4 is the solution. Now, according to my graph, 1, 2, 3, 3, negative 4 is right here. And it is in the shaded area, so it should satisfy the solution, or it should satisfy the inequality. So I'm going to plug it in to double check. Okay, so I have 3 plus 3, which is 6. 6 squared is 36. 36 divided by 2, 18. And then 18 minus 4 is 14. So negative 4 is less than or equal to 14. So this is true. So therefore, my solution, 3, negative 4, um, the point 3, negative 4, it is a solution. All right, let's try another one. So in the second one here, we can see that it is not in vertex form. So we'll have to write it in vertex form. I'm going to change my inequality to an equal sign. Since it doesn't matter what um, the sign is, we're going to do test point later to find out which side we shade. I'm going to factor out negative 2. So I'll get x squared minus 8x. I factor it out of 16, but I'm not going to factor it out of the 31. So I need to figure out what number I need to add and subtract to complete the square so that I can write it in vertex form. The minus 31 we're going to leave on the outside of the brackets. So the number that we factor, uh, sorry, to get the number that we add and subtract is going to be half of negative 8, which is 4, and the negative 4 squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 and subtract 16. Now, when we factor and we want a perfect square, we only want three terms. So we will actually want the bracket to end here. So we're going to need to distribute the negative 2 times the negative 16 to kick out that constant term there. So it becomes 32 and now minus 31. So we factor and we get x minus 4 all squared and then plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to graph. And my vertex is 4 and 1. Pick two numbers on the other side. I can see there's been a stretch and a reflection because of the negative. And when I put in 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then we add the 1 after to get negative 7. So I'm going to do the other points likewise, and I'll just fill them in. And you can try them on your own. And I'm going to graph my... five points. Not sure why my grid has lost some of the lines here, uh, but it still works. And graph my five points. And this time, because it's less than, I'm going to use a dash line because it doesn't include these points that are on the parabola. <coughs> um, the test point I'm going to choose is zero zero and when I plug in zero zero I get zero is less than negative 31 that is false so notice that zero zero is over here so since zero zero is false it doesn't satisfy the inequality we're going to shade the other side so zero zero represents all the stuff on the outside so the part we're actually going to shade in will be the inside of the parabola here Let's check to see if 3, negative 4 is a solution. Now, it looks like it probably is. It looks like the point would be right here. Oops. 
So we'll double check by plugging it in. So we get negative 4 less than negative 2, 3 squared plus 16 times 3, and then minus 31. And we're just going to pull out a calculator to check. So 3 squared is 9, 9 times negative 2. So we have a negative 18 plus 16 times 3, and then minus 31. So on this side, we get negative 1. <coughs> and negative 1 is bigger than negative 4, and it is solution. And according to my graph, it is a solution as well, since that is where it is shaded. All right, we're going to take a look at one more question. So we're going to take a look at a word problem here. So a satellite dish is 60 centimeters in diameter, and it's 20 centimeters deep. So we can draw a satellite dish. And we know that this is 60 centimeters. And it's going to be 20 centimeters deep in the middle here. Actually, that's not so long, probably. So from here down here is 20 centimeters. The dish has a parabolic cross section, which means that it's looks like that. I locate the vertex of the parabola, parabolic cross section at the origin and then sketch the parabola that represents the dish. I determine an inequality that shows the region from which the dish can receive a signal. So the signal can be received in any part of this parabola here. So what I'm going to do is let me plot my axis first. And it says to put the axis, uh, the vertex, it says to place the vertex at the cross section at the origin. Okay. So I'm going to place my axis right here. Actually, let's make that a little bit higher. And so now my vertex is right here at the origin. Uh, what I want to do, I've sketched my problem, is I want to label some other point that I know. And I do know this point here or this point here. Since the dish is 60 centimeters across, I know this has to be 30. And this will be negative 30. And it also says that the dish is 20 centimeters deep. So that means that this has to be 20 right here. So this point, I'm going to label it as 30 and 20. This point, I'm going to label as negative 30 and 20. So let's summarize what I have. So my vertex is at 0, 0. I have a point at 30 and 20. So I'm going to plug it into my y equals a bracket x minus p all, all squared plus q into my vertex form. So my point is my x and y, and my 0, 0 is my p and q. So I get 20 equals a, 30 minus 0 all squared plus 0. So this is going to give me 30 squared is 900, so I get 900 times a. So a is equal to 20 over 900, cross off the 0, so it equals to 1 over 45. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have my parabola, which is y equals 1 over 45, and then x squared, since the vertex is at 0, 0. Now we want to shade in this part up here. This is where it's going to receive a signal. So let me do a test point to see if my inequality is going to be greater or equal to. So my test point is going to be 0 and 1, which is right above the vertex. So when I plug in 1 and 0, I have 1 on the left and 0 on the right. And I want this to be true. So that means, because it's the part where it's shading. So I'm going to put a greater than symbol. And it can also be equals because it can hit the dish. So therefore, my inequality is going to be y is greater or equal to 1 over 45x squared.